dear friends this is martin from secrets the channel for learning about trading and investing welcome to the daily market analysis the daily stock markets analysis show markets tomorrow and this is analysis for march 30th wednesday 2022 so we had another you know the second hammer bounce day today on the dices both of them you know the banks are not that strong you know, which is at catch up in the pace of momentum so let's get into the details and see what exactly happens. So as usual, the pre-market analysis uh, for the next day would be based on all these parameters that is on the screen and you will have some actionables also you know, and we will wrap up with my view on the markets for tomorrow. So this is the candle. See, you have a long week, you know, a long week and a small body. This, that's what a hammer is. Hammer, you know, yesterday we had a hammer, today also we have a hammer. Bank Nifty yesterday we had a hammer. Today also we have a hammer, a red color hammer, this is a green color. So hammer basically shows the the buyer's presence in the downside. Right? The market has dipped, but the buyers lift the markets upwards back in. So the buying pressure is what you can see. That's let's actually bullish. Sometimes when it is in a downtrend or uptrend when the hammer appears, it could indicate you know ahead of time on a possible version of the trend. In our case, overall, if you look, we are in, we, we are not in a uptrend. We are overall in a downtrend. So we don't know where we will place. And neither is it in the top of a you no know, uh, short. Only this will last swing. If you say you no, know, it may not uh, make sense to consider a change in trend right now. But uh, it's not the end of a swing uh, either. And if but you know, yesterday's camel could possibly be you know a swing low and then from there a bounce up can happen but yeah so hammer in general indicates a, you know a change in trend if it is on the, on the top of a trend mostly you no know, on a rising trend or a, or a, on a falling trend you know, either of that it could be a reversal of trend basically sometimes but in our case as i said it may not be applicable but that's a pattern so it's a good bounce and this uh, bounce is happening uh, from a uh, good, very good gap support and a 200 DMA, which was retested yesterday. Right, so that gap seems to be very strong, and the bounces are a bit today also. Bank Nifty also has bound, managed to bounce up, right? but it is not. Uh, let's see the details later. So 103 points, 0.6 per, uh, no, some percentage of um, gain is what happened today, and it is a hammer, no, another hammer, and. Uh, it closed about nifty we are talking about nifty it closed about the 50 and the 200 ema but it resisting just below the 100 ema right we could not close above that and overall you can see that it uh, no, it's a trend line channel uh, no the uh, downside you know, channel that it is trying to break no and there is some kind of an m pattern on the high time frames that can be seen which is also kind of bearish in nature so there is overall bearishness if you Look at the price action on the medium term. That's what I was. Bank Nifty 137. No, that's 0.38. That's less than half a percent of my pool that happened. So, not much of a gain considering Bank Nifty. That also has formed a hammer pattern and it is not closed above the 200 EMA in the window gap. Yeah. So, that is much about, no, very much about, no, 37,500 kind of ranges where the 200 EMA in the window gap resistance gets completed so that's not happened but it has not fallen below the 20 it has taken the 20 dma yesterday and this is where the 20 dma is where it has bounced up so that's where it is in double top and trend line downside trending channel is there the bank nifty also as you can see right but it has a lot of resistance on the upside to clear off now intraday price action this is how it looks like right yesterday we had a v-shape today also we had a v-shape recovery Right. That's the volatile price movement that is happening in today. Bank Nifty also the same. Yesterday we had a U turn actually. Today we had a V, V shape recovery. Then U and V and M and W is what is happening nowadays. And the volatility level is about 20. That's obvious to happen. Bollinger Bands, uh, we can see that you know, overall it's volatile consolidation that is happening because of the width of the bands and uh, and the sideways movement on the lower band but the upper band is slightly expanding on the upside and the price is about 20 dma on both indices that indicates there is a possible potential up move bias you know, 
So support resistance levels if you see you know this is probably the eighth day that it is consolidating at this support zone and that's 17200 17300 uh, if that is broken then you have 17000 in good support zone where it bounced from yesterday and below that 16800 6900 350 38 and below that 16300 350 and then 16550 650 so a lot of support zone side also have a gap support 16350 50 kind of level so say Fibonacci 50 retracement on the upside resistance would be 17350 and 17400 but no it has to care of that then about that 17500 to 17600 which is very nice 23 it's very crucial to have a close above that but that because that's a you no know, only this last swing if you consider it's a Fibonacci 61 retracement level also so it's anything about 61 or below 61 is indicating a good trend reversal right so you have to keep a watch on the 17 about that you have 17800 17850 and then 18000 kind of levels Similarly, in the bank of the resistance is at this is near to 36,000 that we are. The first resistance would be there near to the 36,000 levels, 35,800 and 35,900. That's all. Then 30, 36,300 and 36,800. Fibonacci. Uh, 38% level is where the next resistance, and above that you have the gap uh, resistance of 36,900, 37,000, and 37,500. Fibonacci 23. So this clearing above the 17,500 is crucial. That is where the major resistance is at. Now, right? Support is very good at the 35,000. This is Fibonacci 50, and then you have you know another gap support very close to the 34,100 kind of level. So that's you no. Know, there is also 34, uh, 350, 750 zone where there is previous resistance and previous support and then 35,000, 35,300. So these are all supports on the downside, resistance and upside. We already talked about in the bank nifty. Momentum is sideways overall, it is not crossed. It is rising on the near short term, medium term. Also it is sideways, right? Not rising see now, as of now. Turn it. Trend indicators uh, can nifty continue to maintain the bullishness. So crossover has already happened in bank nifty, but but both are weak trends, right? The bullishness in the nifty and the bearishness in the bank nifty in the short term are the weak trend. Medium term, it is anyway bearish trend has not changed. So trend is very is very good in nifty, but bank nifty is uh, ready to catch up with the trend. And overall in the medium term, both indices the trend change as such has not happened, right? No index cooled off six percent further and then 21.3 which is very good right it is approaching near the 20 levels and below probably right bad volatility on the nifty is 21.17 so and ivp is 80.85 cool. remember it was 98 9 you know 96 kind of levels earlier the light volatility percent so that indicates that you know much have cooled off the uncertainty is slowly cooling off but still about 20 you have to be cautious right Open interest uh, analysis is for the monthly expiry that is March 31st, two days from now, means day after tomorrow, March 31st, 2022 expiry. Look at unwinding that is happening in the calls. You no, know? a lot of put writing is getting added up, right? And if the lot of uh, call writing also has got added up, but some unwinding you can see on the lower side, right? So 16500 and 18,000 is the highest put and write is a, such a wide range of, you know. 1500 points range is what the option put writers and call writers are looking at the market. 17,000 and 17,500 also has put good number of uh, puts and call support and resistance that you can see. Right? 34,000 and 36,000, 2000 point gap is what two days out of expiry the put and call writers are doing. 35,500 and 38,000 is the range of highest puts and calls, supports and resistances on the bank nifty. And put call ratio, if you see, it's nearly closer to the you know, bullishness on nifty in 0.98. 0.76 is not that bullish enough, but no, not be a shy thing. Now, overall features of open interest data, if you see it's a long bit of the gap. So that's about the open interest. These levels make a note of these levels and correlate and match them with the levels and support and resistance that we have seen in the previous slides, right here. And then you will get to you know the levels and you know, that's where you have to make the entries, exits, and all that. Heat map, if you see, there is some greenery that is there. HDFC performed, you know, HDFC Bank also performed. And that moves the market. So it's easy bank performed, no? So Kodak Bank performed. These are the index weights that performed. And financial services is doing good. From CG is going good, automobile is doing good, pharma is everything. It did good except the metal, which is you know the only performing sector. No? That did not do well today. Others all did well. Metal and energy do do well. Index weights if you see HTC bank closed green. Our nominee is still sideways, but uh, momentum is rising up. A lot of resistance to the upside. 
HDFC close green no major resistance one is there just you know, cleared moment is rising but sideways land is setting up but had a red day today you know uh, it's, uh, you can see that momentum is bullish and the only you know stock that is bullish in the last several days only major heavy edge stock I mean um, it was just had a green but remember that it's very close to the all time high momentum is the bullish zones and it's forming some kind of flag uh, pattern breakout potential chances there on the short term daily this is also green and the momentum is uh, resisting at 60 below 60 so still remain in the sideways there is some resistance that is seen there but it has a lot of resistance uh, to be taken out before going to the channel top right as is showing green and uh, it has taken a bounce from the 60 RSI support which is good and trend crossover is about to happen and our old side is momentum uh, yeah it is a major resistance to clear before we can talk anything about that Kodak had a red day it is trying to consolidate near the support zone but it has it tested multiple times earlier so that seems to be very good support and very unlikely that it goes below that you can see that it has taken a support on the RSA and then bouncing up but our old side is momentum and then you know just taking support and consolidating what's what's way so the only stock that is clearly bullish is Lens, but did not do great today. But our old lens and force is where the greener is possible. Others are at side, you know, sideways and uh, sideways momentum and uh, you know, catching up, clearing the resistance one by one. So, those two stocks keep in mind on that one is IT sector, and one is metal sector. That's the same issue. Yeah, IT sector moved up, metal was flat, right? A lot of uh, sectors were flat, metal was flat. Auto was flat, no FMCG was flat, right? Only sectors up was Nifty, um, was reality, uh, and uh, pharma, reality and pharma, pharma 1.5, reality 1%. Pharma is in bullish zones now, but medium term is not bullish, so you may take it to take the long positions based on the analysis, but you have to keep tight uh, stop loss. Metal is bullish, even though it is flat, it is still bullish, momentum only. Uh, medium term and the short term both so long questions can be taken on that it had to be cautious because it's inside you know just slip to the sideways after you know uh, today's move and so it'll be cautiously bullish on that basically because it's very close to the all-time high levels right so those are all catching up in sideways momentum pharma is also in bullish so pharma it metal is the only which are you know close to bullishness you can say right I, so those are all side you know sideways momentum items Look at the institutional participation after a long time. FIS have paused the selling at least, no, hardly 35 crores of buying, but no, better than no, having a sell off since they have been doing it for since ages, right? So that's a good day. Good buying that happened from the DIS also, right? 1113 crores to the cash market, right? So FIS are paused, you know, you can see that yesterday was also lesser selling. so some positiveness could be, could be seen uh, after the march you know second half in the march end you know the aggressiveness in the selling has slightly come down uh, after 21st of march in the nifty probably in the you no know, fis side basically right dollar has cooled off you can see you know, not dollar the currency pair has cooled off you know it may be because of the and dollar index also cooling off let's you know slightly can have a red you know you've seen that it is slipped to the side of the momentum both there's no clear correlation between the usdinr and the dollar index but dollar index are cool dollar in general you know the index of the dollar in europe you know uh, that is followed by some of the europe markets so that's probably you know indicating that there is a cool off in the dollar same is reflecting in our market not always it need not happen that like the dollar but overall rupee has strengthened slightly today but still at the 75.511 so it'll be cautious means you know, of course in the sense if you're trading the currency and um uh, overall you know if rupee is weakening is good for the market so rupee is uh, strengthening right today that's what happened slightly right but still you know not at a great portion and more was slipped inside so that's giving us some hope that you no know, code off may happen now the main reason for that may be crude crude is cooled off i'm not sure the relationship between the you know dollar and crude but crude has uh, you know really cooled off 
to below 100 levels for the first time after long means after many many days you can say momentum also has slipped trend crossover is about to happen so hope that stays like that in 98.3 not sure what fundamental uh, global event happened and uh, you know that caused this cool off the cool off may be the reason why US markets are doing good and our markets are doing good and all that maybe because of this cool oil gold has uh, seems like it is confirmed that it is a failed breakout and it is finally difficult to stay at the support zones and then you know slip the momentum and then seems like uh, you know uh, seems like uh, it may find it hard to hold on that support levels right so that's the cool in the gold gold is attempted a breakout failed a breakout and consolidating and then taking the support cooled cooled off a lot and dollar rupee strength and dollar weakened global indices us markets are green Dow Jones you can see it's, it's climbing into the bullish zones Nasdaq and uh, Nasdaq has already climbed to the bullish zones S&P 500 also climbed the bullish zones so that is a good bounce up that happens that supports are really uh, holding now and then seems like it is heading towards the channel top maybe but the momentum is not confirmed that Dow so overall US markets are green which is good for uh, our markets too now two uh, actionables uh, for the next day or days but the atl seems to be having a very good consolidation in the weekly charts the charts trade has to be taken on a lot of time frame only you know one hour or you know daily charges for the entry has to be made but it could be a potential you know, breakout and the entry has to be taken only on the if the price moves above the high of the red candle this green candle is high it closes above one thing in order that the, the volumes are not that great on the weekly basis but keep a watch if it if it breaks out then you know, that could give a good swing trade for the air trade let's talk cork is another uh, you know, this is having very good volume very super bullish uh, um uh, super bullish momentum and you know bullish trend and also the price action look at the rectangular formation of the candles uh, in the weekly charts and a breakout is clearly confirmed so that could give a good good reasonable swing portions you know? put type stop loss on the neckline of this and then a good ride but volumes is really great and price pattern is also really nice by the air and delta cop the two action also wrap up so the wrap up i know i hardly have had to uh, change anything on this slide because market has been consolidated these last several days right no, no, the changes that has happened is, is very less right it is either mild bullish one day mild you know, bearish another day sideways another day so it's it's kind of consolidation is what is happening with not much you know things happening out in the market although in trade wise if you look it's a very volatile so my view based on all the patterns and support resistance levels and volatility and Bollinger bands and momentum and trend crossover and all of this you know, is a mild bullishness uh, and, you know, and you know, overall sideways movement is what I look for, right? So the reasons uh, you know, have already been we discussed in all of these previous slides, right? So around 11% of record has happened in the last two weeks. That very good support, so that's about the 200 EMA for the Nifty, and the good support downside, and you no know, good price action of you no know, hammer, multiple hammers, gap ups, and all that. Uh, but the bank index is not showing that great uh, momentum. It is having a you know very major resistance on the upside at 200 EMA and the gap. So if that price action happens, then uh, you know it could be a good rally that will happen. And, no, so fair selling has paused a little bit, but it does not stop. You know that. No, in previous week also they had done uh, some small amount of buying, and then immediately they started uh, the big selling. So fair selling is not fully stopped, but uh, so that is you know rising crude and dollar is also very. Even though it has cooled up a little bit, it is not enough. You no, know? we still had a very high rising crude and uh, you no know, rising dollar, uh, and we can rupee. You know. Uh, time period along so so seventeen five hundred thirty seven five hundred are the levels to look out right? and close above the two hundred EMA is what we would look out for the indices. War is still there and peace talks may be happening, war talks may be happening, but uh, you know, the volatility is not fully gone out. 
Until and, and unless you know, we see the range formation below 20 and above 15, that kind of range, and until it reaches there and hovers around that for multiple days, you know, you cannot be sure that there is no uncertainty in the market. Market, you know, it can mean reward and go back to the 28, 30 levels again within a matter of you know three, four days. So that's you no, know, that's the thing that you have to keep in mind. Right? Volatility. There is a reason behind the volatility staying above 20. And uh, you no, know, once the event is digested, is done with, then only the you know, volatility pull off as long as it is there. Just even if you don't understand the fundamentals or the impacts, business impacts of the events, just track the volatility and then if it cools off, that's the time when you can be sure that uh, longs, long portions has been taken. So if I is still there, I have to be cautious on that too. Volatility is there. So the monthly expiry that's coming up today, so the Venice doses will be highly volatile. Positive factor is that the good recovery is happening. See, multiple V shape, U shape moves. No, market is forming hammer means there is buying support and downside. So that's that's a good thing. But when there is global uncertainty and crisis and war and all these things are happening, so any one news can take away all the profits in the last many days. All the price action gets nullified in a matter of day. So the VIX is uh, not cool off below 20 yet. It's still about 20, but it has cooled off a lot in, the last, in this week itself in the last two days. That's positive, but uh, robot head chair portions always by using option strategies or other instruments, right? Head chair losses, investment, long term investment losses, and quality stocks can still be picked because there are some stocks that are still at reasonable reductions ready to rise up after the correction. So, an overnight portion is mandatory that you take risk defined strategies like you know, options. Uh, calendar spreads, vertical spreads, or non-directional strategies and all that so that you know what exactly you will lose in case there is a uh, big reversal happens in the overnight you know? or you know, if you are taking intraday portions always have strict stop losses and watch the candlestick patterns for a potential reversal on the lower time frames that's the only way to survive this so if you are not an expert in that then stay away from the market until the week scores off and you see a trending market right and that's my view neutral to mild bearish mild bullishness for tomorrow short term short term view i could be wrong right it's my view based on the charts and the pattern that i see but you should definitely be able to frame your own view based on all the indicators and the patterns that we studied that could give you a different um, overall market view for the next day right so you can have your option questions or indirect strategies or you no know, portion uh, exit entries all this can be made on the view on your view. So if, if this discussion in the video has helped you to frame your view for the next day, consider hitting the like button, put in your comments and feedbacks and share it to maximum. So you have very few subscriptions. So you know your your help in this regard is appreciable. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy trading and happy learning. Bye.